All I want to know is how you pull someone over in the open sea. Maybe like a little, a smaller yacht with lights on it pulls over a big yacht. And you're like, where do I pull? We're in the open sea. And they're like, just anywhere is good. Just cut the engine and leave the keys where I can see them, Captain. Then they probably say permission to come aboard, even if you're being like a jerk and busting them for having party drugs, but you're still like polite, because it's the sea. And there's an etiquette to it. Even pirates, even pirates ask. If the DEA is behind a yacht and they turn their lights on, where does the yacht go? Like if he keeps pulling over at, at a certain point, that's an evasion. You're fleeing. And what if you fall off the earth and the earth is flat and that's the last thing you learn? You have a boat full of 70 million in cocaine and you're like, they were right! <laughs> notes on Harry and Meghan, or the royal exit, or the royal Megxit, or whatever these British tabloids and the rest of the American papers have decided to do. For the love of the Queen's corgis, leave them alone. Let them move to Toronto, LA, in peace, okay? They want to come here. They want to act. They want to sell things on Instagram. They want to get free cars and drive them around and be paid for it. That's fine. Let them do it. We don't have to follow every single thing their dog is doing, their child is doing. I don't care where they're spending Thanksgiving. I don't even know where I'm spending Thanksgiving. It doesn't matter. We don't know them. Let them have sex in peace. But if they do release a sex tape, I would really like to watch that. But up until that point, I'm out. I'm good. There are 75 housewives I care more about than Harry and Meghan. Hey, I'm Josh Wolf, and I've got notes on child prodigies. I don't like how much pressure is being put on kids nowadays to be exceptional or to be special in certain things. I'm gonna tell you something, as a parent, you want your kids to be dumb. They're easier to trick, it's funner to have them around. It's important to be honest with your kids about what they're good at. When I was young, me and my two brothers, we were drawing one day. My dad was like, you guys go draw some stuff. And they, we all drew superheroes, right? So my oldest brother walked in and my dad was like, this is really great, Dan. You're really good, you're really getting better. And and my brother right above me, Jonathan, he walked in and he's a great artist. And my dad was like, you could do this for a living. This is exceptional. And I walked in and he was like, this isn't your thing. <laughs> I would look for something else. And you know what? That's called good parenting, everybody. I never drew again. I didn't waste another fucking second of my life drawing Iron Man. You know what I mean? I found something else to do. I, I think I started smoking weed earlier than my brothers, but I don't think that has anything to do with the art. <laughs> I've got notes for Elon Musk. He recently released a song or dropped a song <laughs> called Don't Doubt Your Vibe. Uh, I always doubt my vibe. My vibe has been responsible for some of the worst advice I've ever gotten in my life. Your vibe will say things like, fuck that cop, or I'll just cut my own hair. Hey, you know who never doubted their vibe? Manson. The first thing I heard when Elon Musk dropped a song was, boy, that, that guy never doubts his vibe, does he? What's the name of the song? Oh, don't doubt your vibe. No. So please, always maintain a healthy skepticism in your vibe. I'll be dropping that song next week, as soon as I get my clarinet back. Hi, I'm Sarah Weinshank, and I got notes on burning your ex's clothes on Valentine's Day. Like, how pathetic are you? Like, you think this is the end of some epic romance, but you're just burning your ex's Weezer t-shirt in the parking lot of a taco shop? How depressing if a homeless person walked by? You're like, you could have had this shirt, but it belonged to Brandon. <laughs> what kind of satanic ritual are you doing? Are you like summoning the spirits of basic bitchness? Why are we doing all this passive aggressive shit, like burning people's clothes? Like why not key their cars, slash their tires? Like really go for it. You're making a scene when you could be making a difference. Leave a lasting impression so they never forget the romance. Hi guys, my name's Adam Ray, and I'm working on a little bit of hemorrhoidal rage. Kids are getting a little too creative with the things that they can shove up old yeller. Or brown yeller, I guess. Cause, uh, cause of the shit. I do think that, uh, you know, it's insane that we've kind of gone from butt chuggers to butt vegans. You know, they are being cleaner with their, uh, 
their orifice entry objects. But you know what? Challenge accepted, kids. I see you trying to take things up a notch and message received. Here on Lights Out, comedians do not back down from challenges. I'm gonna shove this mini coffee table, card table, 69 uh, set uh, to, uh, I'm gonna shove it up my ass um, for my anxiety and uh, my whooping cough. Not because <laughs> I'm weird, okay? I just uh, wanna, wanna be a part of the, the zeitgeist. So here we go. David? I got some notes on uh, the DEA, I'm assuming. And they found 70, 70 million dollars of cocaine. 70 million? Was it all the cocaine? Is cocaine done now? How are people gonna get sweaty, confident, and lose their erections? I, I guess we're just gonna have to do it like our grandpappies did. <laughs> just on natural. I know the terms. Nose sugar. Booger sugar, coke blastin', coke zero, Diet Cola, RC Cola, that means cocaine. You ask a shady enough guy for some Royal Crown, he'll give you a bag of cocaine. I, I party. It's like the Spice Wars. We used to kill each other for like cinnamon and cumin, but now it's cocaine. Cocaine is like a spice, but the only thing you can spice up is like an Armenian wedding. Or any wedding, but I mean like, saying it's Armenian makes it slightly funnier. <laughs> I don't know why, but it did. 